Hey guys, here is Rod and Staff Grade 5 English. It's a Christian curriculum. It's not a consumable curriculum. I mean, I guess you could consume these, but um, these are a few bucks on the website to replace. This is textbooks and you write on a piece of paper. So you buy it once and you can use it for all of your children and you can turn around and sell it when you're done with it. So um, what I like about Rod and Staff English is it teaches in a very down-to-earth way, a very practical way, easy to understand. We started off with the grade two and we loved it so much that I bought grade three, four, and now five. I bought this at the Christian bookstore in Knoxville. They have like a used homeschool section in the store. Um, I think I paid like 10 bucks for this and maybe like nine or eight for this. And, you know, just somewhere in the couple dollar range for the test and the worksheets. I was planning on buying this for Milestone Books, but it was, it was just, it was in like such good shape. It looked almost brand new and I thought, well, it's there and... I wanted to support the bookstore for carrying it, um, but they, I don't think they're making much money in that homeschool section of their Christian bookstore, and I just wanted to support them. So anyways, um, there's a little bit of dirtiness on the pages, not much, so I thought about taking some 150 grit sandpaper and just lightly doing this to clean it up. But anyways, um, I do plan on going on Milestone Books website and buying more stuff, which carries Rod and Staff curriculum. They carry a lot of other curriculums too, and they're all really low in the price range, in my opinion, when you compare it to other curriculums. And I'm gonna buy more of these too, so I have them as backup for the other kids. The way I do this is my daughter does not write on a piece of paper unless it's something that she needs to write on the paper to kind of like learn it with her brain as she's writing things. If it's a question that she just needs to identify something in the in the sentence then we just read it together and she just answers it and she doesn't have to write it on paper so anyways this is the teacher's guide um what i love about the teacher's guide is all the stuff that's in blue is for the teacher you have the answers you see the student's workbook page right here you see what the student sees and you have the answers over here and they teach you what to ask your child what the answer would be, what you would write on the chalkboard or the whiteboard. So it's, they're simple lessons. They don't take long. Um, with the second grade, we timed it one time where my daughter and I just, we did the lesson together. I would read a little bit. She would read a little bit. Then we went through the questions together and she answered them. I mean, you're talking five to 10 minutes for a lesson. So even if this is not your primary, it's pretty nice because the way they teach it, they go way more in depth then and um it's i should be careful as i say that but i'm pretty sure they go more in depth in my opinion with a becca bju and cle they have like a little box at the top of the workbook page and it teaches you about that concept and then they'll have some questions underneath with this they some of it could be similar to a becca and bju and cle but they they do spend a little bit more time explaining things sometimes and I feel like the questions they ask sometimes are a little bit more helpful in my opinion I just feel like it goes more in depth and I feel like it helps you have a greater understanding of the concept they're teaching and um, they also are very Christian when when you are reading sentences sometimes their sentences are actually telling a story and it's like a bible story um, they, they use so many opportunities to talk about God. So anyways, I'll kind of show you this. You've got that, that sixth grade book was so thick. I was like, oh my goodness, I wasn't even expecting it. So that's the size comparison there. And then, you know, this is how thick it is. Definitely thicker than like grade two. So, um, working with sentences and just pause if you find that you want to see something more more about sentences nouns verbs they go into great detail more about verbs 
pronouns, adjectives and adverbs, punctuation, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections, capitalization, reference books, and more punctuation. Then you have these worksheets. It'll show you review of action verbs, chapter one. So these are only like a few bucks on the website. So worksheet one, you could rip it out. And here's what it looks like. I don't really understand what's up with these worksheets. If, uh, if it's extra practice or I don't really know. There's 68 of them. If I, uh, if I was trying to be cautious with money, I would buy this curriculum. The next step up would be probably CLE and a Becca and BJU after that. This is something you can buy on eBay for like 20 bucks with all this stuff used. If you buy it on Milestone Books, I think it's like 50 bucks, 55, somewhere in there. Like this whole kit, the test, the worksheets, student book, and the teacher book. So that's the worksheets. Here's the tests. Very easy. Like, I feel like the approach they have to teaching is very gentle. So I feel like the way they teach is easy to understand, very down to earth. Like I've the way I've explained rod and staff English was that it feels like someone's just talking to you and teaching you plain and simple. Um so anyways, this is the worksheets here to the teacher. 30 minutes each class, four classes per week. Five classes per week, some some lessons may be divided. So this is my first time, like, I haven't used this, so. Working with sentences. Feel free to pause it if you need to take time to read something. But there's not a whole bunch of extra fluff. It's it's a quick lesson. There's not so much information that it's just like overwhelming. Um, you know, when it's telling you what to write on the chalkboard, it's not much. I mean, this is grade five and there's not that much in here. Like, 
to define a sentence, teach the importance of writing complete sentences, oral review, numbers one and two relate to things taught in the fourth grade. They're designed to help students in their work with sentences. Name the, the parts of speech you studied in grade four, nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions. Name the part of speech that is described in each sentence. It names a person, place, or thing, noun. It takes the place of a noun, pronoun. It shows action or being, verb. What are the four main ways of communicating, speaking, listening, writing, reading? Presenting the lesson. Introduce the lesson by reading the following conversation. Can you guess what I saw? What? A bluebird with an orange breast. When? Last night. Where? In the old apple tree. Ask students which are complete sentences and which are not. Ask how they could be made into complete sentences. Today we'll study what a complete sentence is. Teach the following points. One, a sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. I saw a bluebird with an orange breast. Two, a sentence has a subject that tells who or what the sentence is about. I saw a bluebird. Who saw? I saw. Number three, a sentence has a predicate that tells what the subject does or is. I saw a bluebird. I did what? I saw. Number four, every sentence begins with a capital letter and ends with a period or other end punctuation. I saw a bluebird in the old apple tree. Where did you see it? Question mark. Look in the old apple tree. I saw a whole flock of them. And then it says here, extra practice worksheet three. So um, this is the lesson two. Complete sentences. Do you always speak in complete sentences? Often in conversation, we use only parts of sentences because the other person knows the missing words. What did you read in the Bible this morning? A story. Which one? About Cain and Abel. In writing, we usually need to use complete sentences. The reader may not know what we are talking about if our sentences are incomplete. The reader cannot ask us questions. Read these complete sentences. What did you read in the Bible this morning? I read a story this morning. Which story did you read? I read the story about Cain and Abel. A sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. It has a subject that tells who or what the sentence is about and a predicate that tells what the subject does or is. The subject tells who or what the sentence is about. In the following sentences, the words in bold print are the subjects. A short vertical line divides each subject from the rest of the sentence. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Abraham obeyed the Lord. Glenn and his sister picked the peas. My little black dog is waiting for me. The predicate tells what the subject does or is. The words in bold print in the following sentences are the predicates. A short vertical line divides each predicate from the rest of the sentence. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Abraham obeyed the Lord. Glenn and his sister picked the peas. My little black dog is waiting for me. Every sentence begins with a capital letter and ends with a period or some other end punctuation. The Bible is God's word. What did Jesus do? Jesus raised it, it man to life. So notice how even there they're using biblical type of stuff with teaching. So this is continued for lesson two. Remember, a sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. The subject and the predicate are the two main parts of a sentence. So oral drill. Tell whether each group of words is a complete sentence, a subject, or a predicate. If it is only a subject or a predicate, add words to make a complete sentence. A large uprooted tree does not see the rabbit. So over here, the answer is subject, a large, uprooted tree lay across the road. See that? And then you have written practice. Match the subjects and predicates to make good sentences. Write each completed sentence correctly. And then it wants it to be great hailstones fell on Israelites' enemies. And then copy each word group of words. If it is not a complete sentence, add if it is not a complete sentence, add words to make it complete. Draw a short line. A rabbit was hurrying across the lawn. Okay. And then um this right here. And that's a lesson. So pretty, pretty cool. It's very easy to understand. And I'm going to take a guess and say that this is review right here, what it's teaching. Review from other grades. OK, 
Okay, so now I'm going to show you the back. I don't want to go into like too much detail here. Okay, so there's the answers to the worksheets. It's in blue. Then these are the test answers. So there's the test and the test answer. Then you have an index. So if you're teaching a lesson and it's talking about something and you're like, oh, I don't remember what that means. Because maybe you learned it in another lesson and they're adding on to it and you should remember it. This is when you could come back here and be like, oh, let me look. Where can I find details about that again? And then you you would say, mm, I forget about, you know, comma and dates. Okay, go to page 384 and it'll teach you. So I find this helpful when I'm teaching my daughter because there's times I forget stuff. That's the teacher's guide there. And then here's more of the student book. Very helpful. If you hear noise, it's because I've got my puppy here. Peaches. Peaches, you're so cute. That's our new puppy. The first dog I ever spent that much money on. <laughs> she's she's the most expensive dog. <laughs> Anyways, normally we buy our dogs in the rescue. Right, Peaches? You're the only one we planned as a puppy. She's a sweet dog. I just thought I'd show you because she's just so cute. And uh, Milestone Books has samples on their website so you can see inside and take your time and read a little bit more. Um, but I don't consider this a very long, overwhelming lesson. So that was one lesson. So it was a page of teaching and then a little bit more teaching and then some questions and then some more practice. I mean, it's not short, but um, this is fifth grade. So, but this is an example where I wouldn't make my daughter write this out. We would do this together and we would get through this quickly. So I would just have her tell me, which one is this? So while she'd be looking at this, I'd be in the same book on the same page. I'd be at 78. So I'd be holding my little thing and she'd read this to me and then I'd say, okay, what's number one? And then she would say, it's a comma splice. And then, you know, we would talk about it and then here would be some information. And that's, that's it. Like there's not much. Here's, if you start at the beginning of this, here's where they teach you. 
So you would ask your, your, your student this. Anyways, I hope this has kind of given you a good idea. I, I feel like obviously I'm not doing like a full thrip, a flip, flip through, but I feel like you kind of get an idea of the way they teach. And I feel like it's, it's helpful to at least you get an idea if, if you think this will be a good fit for your family. Um, yeah, I could see how a child would be like, oh, this is boring. I, I could see how they would think that because there's not a bunch of color. But if you look at it as just like, all we're doing is trying to really understand something really well. We're trying to teach you and get through and, and get it done. If you just power through this, it's fine. And it teaches in such an easy to understand way that I think it's fine. And if they don't have to write something down, just, just do it with them. And then you're learning at the same time and staying fresh with what they're learning. And like I said, some of these questions, you don't have to have your student write this all out. That would, that would take a lot longer um, if you, if it's just a, a thing where they just have to call something as it is, like the last one, comma splice, then just let them tell you the answer and then, and, and you know, they understand what they're learning. So anyways, I hope this has helped you to see if this is something you like. And, um, please leave a comment if, uh, you want to see something done a different way, or if you want to see more of something, or if you have some suggestions, um, I like feedback and I plan on using this channel for a lot of flip throughs. So please give me some feedback if you like it. Also, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be making a lot more videos. I've just started making more and I'm going to go through my cubicles and look for different things that I have that maybe we haven't used. Maybe I bought it and I thought, well, I'll use it later or maybe I'll just use it for the next kid. So I'm going to be probably pulling out other random things that I have and making videos and some of the stuff is ways that you can save money because some of the curriculum I have found is just as helpful as other things and it's a fraction of the cost. So anyways, have a great day. Bye-bye.